Welcome to Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering from ELD's Time Vault Games. Here I'm actually on camera versus Lucas, Yorion, and Taxes versus Cephalid Breakfast. And with Cephalid's ability to combo out, Death and Taxes kind of finds itself in a control route. They're really going to need as much creature removal as they can find to try and stop this creature based combo from coming together. Urza Saga starting out. That's going to eventually. Find a Shuko, one of the combo pieces. Will, however, go away. Mana Denial can be an extremely important component of the Death and Taxes strategy. Taxes works much better along with Wasteland and Rashad in Port, and we see he does have a Port, a Foil, one of that. We go after this Tundra. Other mana sources, this could be disastrous as the God and Port keeps that Tundra down. The Urza Saga goes away. Just be absolute blowout. So Breakfast is going to want to make sure that it has extra mana sources in this matchup. Versus control decks that don't run Wasteland, you are using your Brainstorms and Ponders. Make sure everything that you draw is either combo or interaction. Storm. And to optimize things that we know about the solitude in hand from that recruiter of the guard powerful tutor effect often reusable thanks to cards like flicker wisp and of course that sky noodle sitting in the command zone yorion can show up and really change the face of the game triggering all sorts of enter the battlefield's abilities on lucas's side of the board if the game gets to that cycling step through after brainstorm step through just incredible i think that's the biggest mistake that pilots online are making right now is running only a couple copies of the card i am on four copies of it it is absolutely incredible it's the best card in the deck for sidestepping hate as well not a fan of pivoting Make this combo work in the face of just about anything. Worst case scenario, you just get that Thassa's Oracle into hand. Get around any type of graveyard hate your opponent has. Of course, if your opponent has a fistful of creature removal, I'm on Orm's Chant to blank all of that. Maybe part of the mix here. So the combo is ready to go online whenever I want to pull the trigger, but Solitude is on the other side. It is worth noting that Nomads, there we go. So Nomads is actually a very good card versus creature removal. It will draw out removal on the other side, which it in fact does. Another Skyclave Apparition takes out that Nomad. The big danger with the Nomad is it's an instant speed activation. So if you do have removal and I have a Cephalid and Nomad in play, your removal now doesn't matter able to just mill out in response so you basically have to respond to that cephalid being cast with the removal looks like solitude is fired off and force of will is going to brush it aside and that is a wrap there was still another cephalid in hand so even if lucas had another solitude in that situation would have been able to make that work that is just too much time. It's it's a tough matchup. It really is. Because, I mean, for those unfamiliar, if you have never seen the channel before, you may not have seen Breakfast Played. Uh, it is something that I've been running for an extremely long time. Uh, ran it back before the printing of Thassa's Oracle for the memes. And I actually ran it until I won an F&M or some four-round tournament. I don't remember if it was a Wednesday or Friday. Uh, but regardless, it was a real marathon to actually win a tournament with the old build. And when they printed Thassa's Oracle, I was like, hold on a second. <laughs> like, like this joke deck that I have like a million reps with is is actually going to be like really good. The drawback of the deck was the fact that you had all sorts of dead cards to establish the win. Basically what you do is target Cephalid repeatedly, mills your entire deck, Use your 
narco amoebas that enter the battlefield from going into the graveyard to flash back a dread return bringing back whatever from your graveyard now back in the day there were clunky contraptions that you were assembling now it's just thassa's oracle which is also just a very good card on its own as you can cast it from hand if it ends up there really a huge improvement and then with modern horizons 2 both urza saga and step through were just incredible incredible gifts uh, to this deck into so many others uh, but step through in particular is the card that I, I think puts this deck way over the top and is really underestimated uh, it's a instant speed uncounterable demonic tutor that pitches for force of will i mean it's just unbelievable and it's not even a spell it's like better than that like the fact that you can do that like underneath a thalia or really any other type of effects i mean it's really quite impressive you have to start going really deep to think of like any type of drawbacks to the card occasionally the front side is even useful i've won some games because of bouncing creatures which is crazy uh it, it's just incredibly strong you have to get into like pithing needle and like that type of thing to stop the cycling uh, maybe that's an argument but and it is so so very good and if they're using pithing needle on that then they're not stopping your nomads or your shuko plenty of things that you might be happy to use pithing needle this deck no one thing shuts the deck down, that's for certain. Usually skip over the shuffling, but a bit of a rant there. Urza's, I'm sorry, Aether Vial on Lucas's side. That's going to make all of his creatures have a quasi-uncounterability and flash to them, activating Vial to put in creatures end of turn, or in response at the most inopportune times for the opponent adds on the first turn now very often a turn one nomads does mean that it's going to be a turn two attempt Ooh, and a rest in peace so probably can't attempt from here rest in peace is going to exile the graveyard and keep it a non-factor for the rest of the game so no more narco amoebas the plan here is going to be getting thassa's oracle into hand there's the cephalid and we did see a mulligan from Lucas. Pretty typical when people are bringing in graveyard hate. Their, their percentage of mulliganing certainly goes up. I would say their average starting hand might be a full card smaller, to be honest. I mean, you always have a chance of mulliganing when you're drawing those initial seven, but it really does seem to happen quite a lot. People bring in cards like Rest in Peace, Leyline of the Void, matchups where they feel like they need them they're gonna roll the dice and hope to have that type of interaction and it will slow the deck down slightly that would have been a turn to win without the rest in peace we will see actually good enough who have merited the time off to cast the card and the inclusion in the deck we've got another brainstorm wall therapy force a will in hand looking pretty good just need the Thassa's Oracle, which this step through is going to find. So brainstorm, fetch, or shuffle, I should say, thanks to the step through. And shuffling is so good in this deck too. That's one of the reasons why I kept Stoneforge Mystic in the deck for so long, is because shuffling is incredibly good. A lot of card selection and skillful use of your shuffle effects can really maximize the quality of your draws. Thassa's Oracle. Oh, this is a wrap. There's no interacting at this point. Yeah. Brutal. Absolutely brutal. So let's see. He had Skyclave and Solitude. Yeah, Lucas really, he needed to blow up my creatures on his turn. And instead, he had gotten the, the Yorion into hand to have an extra card to pitch to Solitude. He needed to play the Skyclave, blow up one of my creatures. And, you know, probably the most ideal time to do that would have been in response to the Shuffle. That could have been an option. I, I think it just wasn't apparent how dangerous the situation was. With Rest in Peace in play, I think... It's it's understandable that people would feel fairly safe against a deck that is perceived to be a graveyard deck. 
but it's so easy to get Thassa's Oracle into hand when you're playing four step throughs. It's barely an inconvenience. And yeah, I mean, there's, there's an argument. Let me know how you would have played it. I can see an argument for actually trying to save your removal for when I... I guess he could have used some removal on his turn, hope that I mill out, and then maybe remove the cephalid or target the cephalid again and hope that I make a really crucial error and mill myself out and actually kill myself. I mean, you're definitely going to get some players that way. Let me know how you would have played it. Thank you for watching. For more magic from ELD's Time Vault games, be sure to subscribe and check out more videos just for you over here.